Hello everyone and welcome to The Order. I've been making PC builds for many years on forums and I recently began making them on YouTube. And from my experience I have come to the conclusion that users have difficulties understanding the concept of component pricing. This video is going to be a detailed tutorial covering pricing, discounts, the pricing method on my rigs and other cost related aspects of PC building. In order for you to grasp the methodology behind PC component pricing, I have divided this video into four main sections. Types of component pricing, types of discounts, pricing method on my bills and methods for price reduction. Let's start off with the types of component pricing. There are four major types of pricing. Production cost, manufacturer pre-sale price, recommended selling price by the manufacturer and store determined selling price. The first type is production cost. This cost includes the components and labor required to produce a specific PC component. Now getting a component at this price is basically impossible, only the manufacturer receives the finished components at this price. The second type is the manufacturer pre-sale price. This price includes the production cost, component expenses like software copyright taxes, shipping and others and the profit percentage. This pricing is also unavailable to the general public, it is only available to the PC hardware distributors and big PC retail stores. Now each manufacturer determines his own profit percentage. Sometimes this percentage is fair and sometimes it is not. I will explain why am I saying this. Some time ago I worked as a project engineer. My profession is electronics and I was given the task of designing a device. When I finished the project the production cost of my device was $25 and the company sold it for $500. I just want you to keep that in mind. The third type is the recommended customer price. This price is available to the buyers and it is determined by the manufacturer and it includes the pre-sale price plus a profit percentage for the retail store. Big PC hardware stores retail the components at this price and even sometimes offer lower prices because they receive the components at the manufacturer pre-sale price. The final type of pricing is the store determined retail price. This price includes the manufacturer pre-sale price and a store determined profit percentage. In 99% of the times the store determined retail price exceeds the recommended retail price. This type of pricing is common for small PC stores, stores in remote locations and stores in underdeveloped countries. Now the reason that this retail price is higher is that the stores claim that because of their location or because of the size of their business there are additional expenses which result in the higher prices of the components. For some stores this is true but for others it's a legal way to rip customers off especially in underdeveloped countries. I will give you an example. Here is the example. The recommended customer price for the i7-4770K is $350, while the price at my location is $460. You may see that I am paying customs and government taxes. Yes, but my country is a member of the European Union and according to the EU Items and Services Trade Treaty, such additional expenses no longer apply. I searched on Amazon and eBay and there are several new i7-4770Ks from EU members which cost around $360 to $380 plus shipping. So basically I am paying a getting ripped off tax. Here is another example. The R9295X2 has a customer price of $1500. The cost at my location $2100. I think it's pretty close, what do you think? For reference, if I imported the card from the United States, it would cost me $1500 for the card, $350 for import taxes and $50 for shipping. And in the end I spent $200 less for the card. Yup, I am definitely paying a getting ripped off tax. Next up are the types of discounts available for PC components. In this section I will cover rebates, combo deals and other types of discounts. 
Starting off with rebates, a rebate is an amount of money that you get refunded after purchasing a component at its retail price. You can see the example on the screen. In most cases this is a temporary sale promotion. The most common type of rebate is the mail-in rebate. In general you receive your amount in the mail under the form of a check, coupon, debit card or another form of payment. Moving on to combo deals, combo deals are a type of discount which is given to you when you buy a particular set of components and items. The only condition is that the items have to be bought at the same store. Here are two examples. This is an example of a CPU motherboard combo. Separately the CPU costs $70 and the motherboard $45. If you buy them from a store that offers a combo deal on these components, you will purchase them with a discount. This is an example of a full PC build combo. Some big PC retail stores offer a discount if you buy a full PC build from them. You can also receive a combo discount if you buy a full PC build plus a monitor and peripherals. Now let's move on to combo deals on items with rebates. This is basically the holy grail of sale promotions. This type of discount combines the previous two ones. Here is an example. Imagine that you have two components that have rebates on them. But the retail store also offers a combo deal on them. So basically you are getting a partial refund from the rebates plus an additional discount from the combo deal. In the end you could get the components for half the price or even cheaper depending on the store. The next type are the PC component liquidation sales. The purpose of these sales is to sell outdated components in order to make room for the next gen ones. Here is an example. Imagine that a store has a lot of HD 7000 series video cards and then the R200 series come out. So the store makes liquidation sale in order to make room for the new components. This type of discount usually lasts until the components run out. Sometimes if the sale doesn't ship the components fast enough, the store makes an even bigger discount. Let's move on to the third section of this tutorial, the pricing method on my rigs. As a PC builder I always try to bring you the best builds for the price. So in this section I am going to explain how I form the price on my rigs. Unfortunately PC component prices are not identical throughout the world. In most cases I use the recommended customer price for my builds because it is the closest thing I have to a worldwide universal price for the components. Even though the prices are not universal the component selection is still optimal for any location. I will explain with an example. This is an example rig and as you can see it has two overall prices. The recommended customer price and the store determined retail price at my location. Despite the price difference however the component selection is still optimal because I cannot buy a similarly performing rig at my location for the recommended price of the first rig or a better rig for the store determined retail price at my location. In order to offer PCs with good price to performance ratios I also include rebates, combo deals and other discounts in my builds. Now unfortunately these discounts are mostly available in North America. That is why I note that the overall price includes these discounts. Shipping is another aspect of the pricing in my builds. It is also a very relative thing because it depends on location, rates, size and weight of the items and other factors. For some users it is free, but for others it is not. So that is why I do not include shipping costs in the end price. So we have reached the final section of this tutorial. The methods for price reduction. New components come out every day. There are also new combo and rebate deals available all the time. Old deals expire and other factors that change the price of the whole build. And this causes problems for potential buyers. In this section I will explain what action to take and in what order to take it if the price of a particular build shifts too much. This is the example rig. You will notice that I have applied all the discounts in the end price, but these discounts are not permanent. This means that in time the rig will revert back to its original price. If this happens you have 4 options available. This is option 1. You can do some research and look at other retail stores which offer the same components at lower prices 
or with rebate or combo discounts. There are sites that allow you to search for components and the stores offering them at the lowest prices. I will link some of them in the description. This is option 2. You can partially reconfigure the build by switching the manufacturer on some of the parts with components that are cheaper or have discounts on them. Let's go back to the example rig. Its core components are the Pentium G3258, the 8 gigs of RAM and the 260X. Initially the rig costs $350 but when the rebates expire it will cost more. So in order to get a similarly performing PC we will have to make a reconfiguration like this. As you can see the new rig basically has the same performance as the old one but it has the same initial price as the old one. The core components are the same and there are no unacceptable compromises made with the rest of the parts. This is option 3. Option 3 is essentially an entire overhaul of the whole rig including the core components. Here is the old rig and here is the modified rig. Now it is based on the AMD platform, it still has 8 gigs of RAM and the GPU is now a GTX 750. This rig also fits the $350 price range, it offers similar performance to the original one and again there are no sacrifices made with the rest of the components. This is the final fourth option. This option implements a scale down of the components in the machine. If the other three solutions are not available, you can reduce the price of the build by sacrificing the rig's speed, features and aesthetics. I have described this method in detail in the final section of my common mistakes when building a budget gaming PC tutorial. So. This concludes my in-depth pricing tutorial. I would like to note that in time the specific build examples I have given will become obsolete but the general principles will remain the same. I hope this tutorial helps you to configure a better gaming rig. Send in questions, like, comment and subscribe for more tech videos. The order signing out.